Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mariah Falcon here with MicroCAD's tech team. Um, and today we are going to discuss cost estimating within Revit. Um, so before we get started, um, I do want to encourage you, if you have any questions, type those in the questions box um, and we will get them answered. Um, also, a few little caveats while we are talking about cost estimating, um, we are not providing the numbers for what something does cost. Since we do support a very large geographical region, we certainly can't encompass all of that within one entity. Um, and we also are aware that different construction methods um, can result in different costs. Um, and of course, different firms approach those differently. So just keep that in mind as well. But we're gonna speak um, about the two ways um, that you can do some takeoffs within Revit. So our first way um, is what we are referring to as a material takeoff. So both of these are going to be schedule based and you can export them to Excel. There's a multitude of categories that you can work with and you can see on the right hand of your screen all of those categories. Some minimum suggested parameters um, for your schedules would be material name, material area, material cost, and then you are going to need a calculated parameter um, for a total material cost. And that's gonna equal that area times that cost dividing it by one just to ensure that our units are all correct. So one of the things to be aware of with a material takeoff is that you really do need accurate representation within your model. So throw out those generic walls and default floors um, and get in your two by fours or your metal studs with some gypsum. One of the great things that this is actually um, really useful for is if you are applying materials as a paint in Revit. Um, and a true example of that is, you know, physical paint that you would be painting your walls with. So if you're needing to understand how much, um, how many gallons you are needing, this is a great way to look at that. So our second principal way is our content or our family-based um, schedules. So again, this is exportable to Excel. Um, you have a multitude of categories. Again, there's actually a few more in this category compared to a material takeoff. Again, you can see that on the right-hand side of your screen. When we're talking about something such as a wall, roof, a floor, typically we do wanna consider cost per square foot. You can also consider um, cost per cubic foot if you are working in volumetric calculations such as concrete pours or something of that nature. There is cost per unit and that comes into play when we're talking about doors, windows, furniture, you know, kind of one entity that you can, you know, kind of physically pick up and move and kind of hold in your hand at once. So some parameters needed for this type of schedule. So you're gonna need your family and your type. You're gonna need area. You're gonna need cost. And then again, you are going to need a calculated parameter of area times cost. And again, divide that by one so that our units cancel each other out. Everyone remember their math classes from high school. I always remember that was pretty important. So with that, let's hop into Revit and look at some of this in real time. So. Hopefully you are seeing on your screen at this point a wall schedule. So this would be content or family-based takeoff um, with its area and its cost. Now, where do some of these parameters live? So I'm gonna switch to my floor plan here. If I zoom in, just grab one of my walls here. You're going to want to edit type. And then under edit type, all the way at the bottom is a cost associated with that particular wall type. Now, of course, this needs to take everything in 
that wall composition into consideration. So, and I know some people, um, some companies, I should say, you know, there's a concern whether something is eight foot versus 10 foot, and that can affect the cost also. So that's something that you all would probably want to be aware of. Right. Similar to um, walls, you see, let me pick on a door here. Again, edit type. And again, it's very towards the bottom here of your parameters. So it likes to kind of hide in my opinion, but everything within Revit should have this cost parameter and just to be aware of that. So that is where our cost live for our family or our content based. And remember, that's the second one we discussed. So that first one we discussed was the material takeoff. And that is going to live on your materials. So if you want, you can path to that from selecting a wall type. Um, or I'm going to go to my Manage tab, click on that materials. All right, so I'm going to bring up something here. And I know that air is in one of my walls, so I'm going to click on it first to kind of look at it. Under its identity data, you will see that there is a cost down here. Um, so this, of course, is where you would type that cost in for a particular material. Of course, you know, air, I'm hoping that it doesn't cost us anything. Hopefully the future stays like that as well. So, you know, you could simply put zero in here so that your Excel does still populate. If I look at something else, um, so I know I have some cladding in here, maybe. Uh, actually, let's look at brick. I know brick is in here somewhere. So selecting one of my bricks, you will see that I have a $35 cost associated to that. And once I switch to my schedule, you will see that information as well. I'm going to cancel out of that. Right, so first I'm going to go to my wall material takeoff schedule. So if you aren't familiar with how to get a wall material takeoff schedule, you can go to your schedules and quantities, do a right click and do a new material takeoff. So if I bring that up, you're going to see all those same categories that we saw during the PowerPoint. And then, of course, you know, you would pick your applicable one. Walls are typically fairly easy to talk about because they do have multiple materials in them. Let me cancel that. Let me open this up. And this is then your wall material schedule um, fully expanded. Um, and you will see that there are some parameters in here. So going across the top here, material name, material area, material cost. One of the things that I do want to call everyone's attention to is that there is truly a parameter that says material name, material area, and material cost versus um, something simply as cost or area. So I know that can trip a lot of people up. So just to be aware when you are doing material takeoffs, you are grabbing those parameters that have the material at the very front of that name, because that's going to make a huge difference. I'm going to cancel out of that. So you will see um, in here, we've got everything that we've talked about so far. One of the nice things, um, this material as paint that we talked about earlier, click off of that. Um, if I scroll down in here, you will see that it is populating when we do have um, something applied. And you can actually apply a um, conditional formatting to this cell so that when it equals yes or no or something similar, it can actually turn a different color. Just calls your attention to it um, and you know, kind of pay attention to that one. All right, and then just as reference, our material takeoff, um, you know, I've kind of sorted this down so that it isn't as cumbersome. And what you can do is you can see in here that Revit is totaling up those areas for us. And if you aren't familiar, let's take a look at how to do that real quick. So within your properties palette, 
under your other, if you click any of these five, you're going to get to the same dialog box. You can just sort on your tab to find where you are exactly wanting to go if you ever forget. So if I'm looking at my area here, down at the very bottom, there is that calculate totals. So you have to ensure that that drop down is set to calculate totals. And then um, also, you know, your grand totals down here as well in your sorting and grouping. And that's going to give you those nice overall numbers that everyone is needing. Cancel. Let me save that real quick. Just be on the safe side. So let's then take a look at our wall schedule that would be content or family based. And again, you can do this with, um, you know, any other categories within Revit that are in the schedule. This is just what I have kind of picked on for the day. So you will see that this one is also expanded out quite a bit. Um, everything in here. So I am seeing, you know, my brick on metal stud, its area cost, and then of course that total cost as well. All right. So. And of course, if you need it, um, I don't have it pre-baked here. You can always, um, you know, sort that down so that it is a little bit more condensed as well. So, one of the things I do want to point out, um, and I'm going to look at, go you know, switch back to this material takeoff here, um, is that you can actually export this to Excel. Now, one of the things that I do want to make you aware of when you are exporting this to Excel is how all of the numbers are starting to look within Revit. So let me close this here real quick. I'm going to open this one. All right. And then bear with me while I tile these next to each other. You will see I have um, just my sorted here on the left hand side and then my sorted I know I'm going to export this one I've pre baked a little bit for you. Under our material cost on the left hand side, you will see that you know US currency de designation is at the beginning. Um, and then in our exported there is not that designation and why this becomes important is how Excel deals with those numbers. So if you are wanting to export this to Excel, I would suggest taking those um, designations off just so that you can manipulate those numbers a little bit easier. So let me close this out. And you might be asking yourself, how do I do this? So again, going back to that formatting, I'm going to look at material cost in this instance. And then from cost, I'm going to go to field format. Um, and then you can see I have unchecked use project settings. I have ensured that we're only going to two decimal places. And then from there, there is no unit symbol attached to this. So that's one of your main keys here. No unit symbol. Cancel. OK. Now. Bear with me one second. You can actually go to your file. You can export this. Scroll down a little bit. Do report. And then you can do schedule. Just going to bring this up. Going to rename this real quickly. So it is going to come as a TXT file. But the great thing is that Excel will read that TXT file. So bring Excel up. I forgot to open that. And then from there, we're going to do an open. I'm going to browse to where we are at. Bear with me. And then also always ensure that your file type is looking for all files. Um, because if it's only looking for Excel, you're not going to recognize it. You can do that V2 because that's what I just exported. All of this should be the same. Next, next, quick finish. And then I just got to expand these columns because Excel brings it in 
all kinds of small. And then you will see automatically here, this is what your material schedule looked like. And now you can actually use this information to go upstream and keep going with your cost estimating and your takeoffs for your project. So that's a big key right there. So I'm gonna save that real quick. I'm gonna hop back into Revit. Um, a few nuances that I do wanna talk about. So I know we've been talking about area. You can just as well take this off for volume that I mentioned earlier. So looking at um, our floors, that kind of would be concrete poured. You can certainly take those as well, bring that material volume into your schedule and just do the same calculation with material volume times cost and divide it by one cubic foot and you're gonna get your end result. Um, a few other nuances that we have seen, if you are someone that includes your wall sweeps into your walls, please be aware that Revit does not calculate those separately. So you will need to build that into the cost or you can transition your workflow and include, excuse me, put, place your wall sweeps separately from your walls so that they aren't built in. And then in this case, you can do a schedule of just those sweeps. And of course, you can look at the length and what that cost would be and then calculate something appropriately. So with that, um, I want to thank everyone for your time today. If anyone has any questions or you would like to discuss this further with us, please feel free to reach out to us um, on any of our social media platforms, or if you have a rep that you are working with, um, and we will get your questions answered. So with that, thank you everyone and have a great rest of your day.